Data acquisition is a powerful tool to improve your driving at the track or at the autocross. But who's got the time? We're gonna show you a couple of great tips to get the most out of data acquisition in as little time as possible between autocross runs, between track sessions, or just when you have the time to spare. So everybody's all about data these days. There's all kinds of great, affordable, powerful data acquisition systems but they're complex. There's a lot of parts, there's a lot of analysis to do. And most of the time that we go to the track or we go to the autocross, we're a one person band. It's just you and a car and maybe some tires you brought along. So who's got the time to analyze all that data? Well, let's have a couple of quick tips to get the most out of very, very simple data analysis. Well, the first thing you're gonna need is a user-friendly data system. One of our favorites actually is the Apex Pro. I'll show you why it's one of our favorites. Boom, because it's right here in my pocket. It's a tiny box that mounts on your dash and it is an iOS compatible device. This can be an iPhone. The iPhone that you carry with you every day anyway it can be an iPad. Makes it extremely easy, especially if you're somebody who's in the Apple ecosystem already to integrate this into your data analysis because it is so simple. Next thing you're gonna to have to do is figure out what you wanna analyze from that data. Like I said before, there's all kinds of information that you're getting from a data system, but to parse that information takes time and we don't have a crew to sit there and go over data with us. So is there anything that we can do maybe just in the few minutes between an autocross run or the few minutes we have between a track session to find some red flags, to find some things to work on that we can take away from that data that we can instantly turn around and use on the next session. So we are at the Florida International Rally and Motorsports Park here in Keystone Heights, Florida. This is the official test track of Grassroots Motorsports. Great place to show you folks what we do with data analysis. And this is something that we do when we test all of our new cars like this uh, Toyota 86 or all of our project cars because we're on a limited schedule as well. So we're gonna pop the Apex Pro into the car, sync it with our iPad and start taking some data off of some runs here that we're gonna be doing at the firm. We test a lot of cars. In fact, the day that we're here recording this, we're testing two cars here on track. Having a data system, we can move easily back and forth between those two cars, very important. Another thing we love about the Apex Pro, ease of mounting. It's one tiny box, pop it in the car, you're ready to go. You don't even have to have a permanent mount for it. We use these uh, neat little suction cup magnet mounts and they hold it just fine. And I'll also hold it in the eye line of the driver that allows you to use the uh, Apex score function that displays in real time on the LEDs on the front of the unit. So as a test device and as a driver development device, uh, things we love about this is it does give you feedback from accelerometer data, from GPS data, and now OBD2 data. You can track all of your OBD2 inputs in real time on this screen that shows you all of the data coming off of your OBD signal, like throttle position, uh, like temperatures, and basically whatever you, the OBD bus on your car tracks. You can now track with the dongle from Apex Pro. So when, when you don't have a lot of time to review data, you wanna look for red flags right away. So the first thing you can look for is any flat lines on your speed trace. And what that's gonna tell you is anytime the car is not either accelerating or braking. So if we look at this lap, we can see a couple of flat lines and then we can dig a little bit deeper and then see what's actually going on. We've got a flat line here about uh, two thirds of the way through the lap and we can see that, okay, it's in a constant radius, very long corner. So technically that's probably not horrible because we're trying to maintain a constant speed around that corner, but we can dig a little bit deeper. We can see that it's not really a flat line after all. We uh, scroll forward a little bit here in the timeline and you can see the car negotiating this left-hand corner and it's kind of flat, but it also changes quite a bit. Even in a constant radius corner, we shouldn't be changing speed up and down that many times. We should have a progressive deceleration, maybe a period of even speed and then progressive acceleration out. So if you've got a speed trace going up and down and up and down several times, big red flag and that's something you can spot very quickly on a data review. So the next thing you want to look for, and this is something you can spot very easily, 
is your braking performance. As you're approaching a corner, you want to get off the gas and get on the brake and get on the brake at a, at a maximum level for the most part. So if you see a speed trace like this one we have right here, we'll, we'll scroll forward through the speed trace as we're approaching this right hand corner. We can see we hit our, uh, our maximum speed about 70, 76, 77 miles an hour and then the speed starts to gradually trail off and then starts to rapidly decelerate. No, 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 that's bad. You want that speed to come off right away. If you have to adjust braking in the, the course of a, of a braking zone, hopefully it's gonna be very minor modulation just to control tire slip. You don't want to have a, a very light initial brake pressure transitioning to a harder initial brake pressure. If anything, you want it to be the opposite. You wanna have a hard initial brake pressure that you're trailing off towards the entry if you have to adjust your entry speed, if you found you've, you've over braked a little bit. So a uh, big red flag there is those very rounded braking curves on your, your speed trace. That speed trace should accelerate and then boom, take an instant fall off the table. So that's something you can spot before you even leave the driver's seat on a quick initial review of your data after, after a run or after a track session. So one thing you can look at very quickly just to get a general snapshot of your entire performance over a session is this G distribution chart. It's a dot graph that distributes all the G loads taken at various sample times over the course of a run. Now, we've talked before about how you always want to be doing something. You always want to be braking, you always want to be accelerating, you always want to be in a cornering mode or transitioning smoothly between one of those two things. So if you see a lot of G distributions in the middle part of this graph where nothing's going on, that's a big red flag. That's something where you can look at that instantly and say, ooh, that was not a great session. I'm going to go back and analyze some of these specific points. So, when you see a lot of data in the middle of that graph where nothing's happening, big red flag. Time to take a little bit deeper dive on those. So, talk all about what you can do if you don't have a lot of time to spend uh, analyzing your data, maybe between runs or, or between track sessions. One of the cool things about the Apex Pro, one of the reasons we like it a lot, is it gives you essentially a red flag detector with its Apex score function. You can scroll through a lap and anywhere you see green, that means that the uh, AI in the Apex Pro thinks you're performing to the level of, of the car based on previous laps, based on previous learning that it's done. Anywhere you see orange, red, or yellow, especially those red areas, that's areas where it does not think you are at the limit of the car. Now, some of these red areas are going to show up in straightaways where you're just going to be on the gas pedal for a long time, and obviously most cars can't reach the limit of adhesion during third or fourth gear acceleration, so don't worry about those. But if you start seeing red, orange, yellow in corners, time for a deeper dive. And the other cool thing about the Apex score function is it gives you that in real time as well. That unit on your dash has a series of red and green lights, and you want to turn all those red lights off, basically. It's showing you in real time how much of your potential performance it thinks you're using based on previous learning. There's a lot of data systems out there right now, and there's a lot of great data systems out there right now, which is ultimately really, really good for the enthusiast. But the best data system in our world is the one you're going to use the most and the one that's going to be the easiest to use. Now for us right now, that means the Apex Pro because when we come out to test days like this at the Florida International Rally and Motorsports Park or any racetrack we're testing at, we are usually a pretty small operation. We're an independent magazine. We don't have a big crew to sit there and pour over data. So we need to grab something that's in one box, take it out to the track, and get all the data we need from our testing. And the Apex Pro does a fantastic job with that. If you are running uh, on a shoestring like so many of us are, the best data system is the one that you're gonna be able to use and get the most data off of in the least possible amount of time and with the least possible amount of hassle. For us right now, that is very much the Apex Pro. If you wanna learn more about the Apex Pro, there's a link down in the description. And as always, please like our content and subscribe to our channel here at Grassroots Motorsports. Support brands that support Grassroots Motorsports. Get your chemical solutions from CRC Industries. Visit crcindustries.com to learn more.